I'm Dr. Amit Shah, I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine based in London. And today I'm going to have a brief discussion and some updates uh, onto a very interesting topic, which is uh, pre implantation genetic screening and the resulting diagnosis of uh, mosaicism. So I would highly recommend that uh, you have a detailed read of this article in Fertility and Sterility, uh, which basically is a great reflection um, on uh, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy and mosaicism. And it tells us about how we have got to where we are now. So we, as we all know that pre-implantation genetic screening is gradually becoming a mainstay of um, uh, many IVF cycles uh, across the world. Um, it uh, started off in 1990 and then by 2009 the technology had moved leaps and bounds and we were performing array CGH techniques. Uh, by 2013 uh, next generation screening came into practice which obviously has uh, changed the way we look at the embryos uh, quite radically. And the difference between the array CGH and um, NGS technology is that the ability and the resolution to detect mosaicism um, has uh, improved significantly with the NGS technology. Of course, this also then raises uh, very interesting questions because um, from where I see it, the technology has moved much quicker than our understanding of uh, uh, embryo biopsy outcomes and especially the areas of mosaicism. Um, when the reports come back as normal with euploidy or abnormal with aneuploidy, it's a very straightforward decision for a clinician that you can either replace those embryos or discard those embryos. Uh, it is the middle of the road mosaic embryos which becomes a very big clinical problem. Should we replace these embryos? Should we discard these embryos? If we replace these embryos, what should we expect with regards to pregnancy rates, miscarriage rates, birth defects, etc.? What should we be telling our patients and how do we counsel these patients? And this article um, goes through these uh, things in a very um, systemic fashion, uh, in a very detailed fashion as well. Now, one of the most important things is that all mosaic embryos are not the same. Um, yes, all men are created e equal, but the mosaic embryos are not. Uh, there are three different uh, classifications of mosaic embryo according to pre-implantation genetic society. Um, the, the most common one that uh, we understand uh, and happens due to post-zygotic error and often related to maternal age is the whole chromosomal mosaic embryos. Um, these are the embryos where there may be a chromosome uh, missing or additional chromosome uh, added into it, uh, so i.e. there could be deletion or addition, uh, especially uh, leading to a trisomy or monosomy. Uh, these are the type of uh, chromosomal mosaic embryo which uh, we understand a lot about. Uh, and these are the ones which have got um, a uh, not a uh, not a great outcome the second type of mosaic embryos we're looking towards is segmental mosaicism and these are the most difficult to understand um, the uh, segmental mosaicism uh, do not have a change in chromosomal numbers unlike the whole chromosomal uh, mosaicism uh, there is a partial chromosome deletion or duplication and hence it becomes very difficult then to decide that should we replace these embryos and what would be the um, outcome. Um, about 6 to 30 percent of blastocysts that show mosaicism will show segmental mosaicism. And lastly, the third type of mosaicism is complex uh, mosaicism, which is defined as an embryo that contains three or more whole chromosomal abnormalities. Now, if we look at these different types and look at the outcomes of these embryos, um, uh, the discussion and the question comes saying, well, what should we do then? How do we differentiate them? One, um, should we replace them? And what should we tell our patients? So the best way to look at whether one can replace them or not 
is based on what the pregnancy outcomes may be. And um, from what we know currently um, about reproductive outcomes of mosaic embryos, um, it's still our very early days. And, you know, um, uh, scientists like Mune et al. have performed a uh, large number of blastocyst biopsies, almost up to 30,000 uh, embryos have been biopsied to look at the implantation rates of mosaic embryos. So the question then comes that is there a clinical difference in outcomes between the different types of mosaic embryo? And the short answer is yes, there is a very clear difference. Um, Zore et al. have recently published a very interesting study in fertility sterility, which once again I would recommend that you have a read of it. If you look at the uh, birth rates, uh, birth defect rates and um, uh, miscarriage rates, uh, complex mosaics have the lowest reproductive potential. So those are the group of mosaics which are least likely to lead to a live birth. Uh, whole chromosome mosaics had a significantly reduced live birth of 13% uh, and spontaneous loss rate of 16%. So they're also not great, but it is the segmental mosaics which seem to have similar reproductive outcomes as euploid embryos in some studies with a live birth rate of 57% and no difference in the rates of spontaneous abortion. So that is the area that we can really focus on um, to minimize the embryo wastage. The Zore et al's uh, data again shows that uh, when they replaced segmental mosaic embryos, um, they did achieve uh, quite good live birth rates. Um, and some of the other studies have also shown that the live birth rates in these group of patients are almost as good as euploid embryos. So uh, it's worth uh, looking at these things for further researches, etc. Um, at the moment, though, where we stand is that um, it's very difficult to cancel our patients. It's very difficult for clinicians to actually make these decisions, and especially in a world where there is a huge medical legal problems, it becomes quite difficult when we advise patients to actually screen their embryo, and basically we advise this technology to uh, almost achieve a perfect live birth. Uh, but that in my view is still not possible. So however advanced the technology is, our understanding is still lagging far behind. And I think that is what over the years I'm sure will improve and we will be able to select and choose better quality embryos. Hence, we can continue to apply the strategy of single embryo transfer and minimize the risk of multiple pregnancy as that should be our ultimate goal that people end up with a single, live, healthy birth. Thank you very much. Thank you.